He hosts the appropriately titled Zach Gelb Show. He is very good on Radio Crowder. I know you listen to a ton of yes. network radio, more than I do, but Zach Gelb <laughs> happens to, to be Zach one of the times. guys. Yeah, he's one of the guys that yeah. I listen to. He's also a very good follow on Twitter. Uh, you'll hear this guy on radio for years and years and years. That's how entertaining he is. And by the way, I am not easily entertained, certainly by radio people. So <laughs> Zach Gelb is with us now. Hello, Zach. Hockman Crowder, Sour Taste Bud Solano. What's happening, guys? You good? <laughs> we're, now, we're watching you on our video feed, which Solano will post later on the 560 WQAM YouTube page. Where are you doing this from? Are you in the CBS Sports Network studios? Yeah, so technically I'm in CBS Sports Network and WFAN right now in the Boomer and, and Geo studio where right now it's like a morgue around here because the Knicks absolutely stink in this series and the Heat are kicking their ass. Yeah, there's no uh, there's no real two ways around that. The We've talked about this. So the Heat lead the Knicks three games to one. Is there anything you've seen that makes you to be, makes you believe that the Knicks can win this series? No, it's over. And I thought that going in, and this is what's shocking to me, like my producer last night, uh, who could be a dope from time to time, and he is a big-time Knicks fan, he was like, oh, this Knicks season is now a failure. They should have beat Miami. And I go, what the heck are you talking about? Clearly, Jimmy Butler, even though he had that ankle injury, and the Heat are a better team. And I thought the Knicks really reached their apex and accomplished everything they could accomplish this year in getting to the second round after beating Cleveland in the first. And Zach, you you know you watch it closer than we do. They don't look good to me. I didn't watch a lot of regular season, but they don't look like a team that should be in the second round. To your point, like I don't even think they should have made it out of the first round. If they didn't play Cleveland. Are they better than what they're showing us in this series? I think what they're showing you is they're not ready to forget about a championship. Just go to a conference finals. Like they could play hard. Thibodeau's always going to have the guys playing hard in the regular season. In the postseason, they could go out there and they could win one series. But Jalen Brunson has been fantastic for them. Outside of that, though, you look at this team and you go, who the heck else is going to be part of a championship culture in New York? Like they don't have, like RJ Barrett maybe could be a three on a championship team. He's not a one or two. And Julius Randle's effort in this series has been absolutely pathetic. And last night, oh, maybe the Heat just want it more. That's embarrassing. That is so embarrassing for a competitor to say, oh, maybe the other team wants it more. How about you get on the court and actually do something about it and show a little fight? There's one thing to go down and have another team be better, but at least kick, at least be a pain in the ass and punch the team in the other face before you go and get viewed at a funeral in, in, in about a few days. It's wow. ridiculous. Wait, wait, wait till Solana starts telling him that uh, chicken tender sub at Publix is better than Katz's Deli because he's already fired up. But you do a ridiculous. national show. Hold on. That, that's Hold a on. dumb Hold comment on. by Solana. You do dumb. a national show. I want to know what is the national narrative on Jimmy Butler and has that narrative on Jimmy Butler changed nationally just based off the Milwaukee series in round one? I, I think it changed a few years ago. I'm not one of these dopes that goes out there and's like, oh, it was a bubble, so therefore it doesn't count. I think you're just trying to get a reaction if you say things like that. Jimmy Butler has always been a great competitor, and I do think he's been underappreciated for years. But if you look at what he's doing right now, if he goes on to win, this round's already over. If he wins the next two rounds, this will remind you a lot uh, like what Kawhi Leonard did a few years ago with the Raptors, what Dirk Nowitzki did with the uh, Dallas Mavericks. Uh, this is a guy that is just an absolute killer, and very few guys in this league can win without another star. And Jimmy Butler shows you they may not have the best team. Uh, he, he may not be the best player in the league, but you do not want to face him going into the playoffs. That's why when everyone was talking about the teams that could get to the finals before the postseason started, you knew in the East it was the Bucks. You also had the Sixers and clearly the Celtics as well. I said, what about Miami? Like, if there's going to be one dark horse, don't tell me it's the Knicks. Don't tell me um, that it was going to be Cleveland. I was looking at Miami because it gets to the point, and not every team could have this, where the regular season doesn't matter when you know that team and that culture can just find a way to get hot. We saw it a few years ago, and we're seeing it again happening now. And, Zach, the, the Heat are going to the Eastern Conference Finals. That, that's done. What about the other side? Who should I be cheering for in this 2-2 matchup between the Celtics and the 76ers? The Celtics are a better team 
But what annoys me with the Celtics is we haven't seen their killer instinct yet. Uh, th this series should not be 2-2. For Philadelphia, we know how good Embiid is and how great Embiid is, but James Harden finally has decided to show up in some of these games in the postseason. We saw what he did in games one and games four, but it's tough to kind of expect that consistently just with his postseason struggles of the past that have been well documented. I, I would imagine that the Heat fan would rather face the Sixers. I do think they're an easier matchup, but something concerns me with Boston, where Boston still probably should get to the NBA Finals, but they are, they're touching the stove a lot, and eventually I, I'm going to think they're going to get burnt because we haven't seen them be great yet, and now they're in a 2-2 series, and this series is a lot closer than what most people, even in Philadelphia, and I'm wearing the Temple shirt. I, I, I used to live in Philadelphia, and if people in Philly are being honest with you, they're even surprised this series is 2-2. I've had conversations with Zach Gelb before about Philly cheesesteaks because, you know, my wife is from Philadelphia and she taught me from uh, an early age. You got to where the bad ketchup. food takes start on your show. It's with gotta you to put got to put ketchup on a Philly cheesesteak. Philly cheesesteaks, not a Philly cheesesteak without some ketchup and some cheese whiz. And I don't know where Zach grew up, but the fact that you don't put ketchup on a cheesesteak is uh, a little shocking to me. Well, I go to great cheesesteak places. You just go to okay cheesesteak places that need some ketchup in it. I go to Della Sandros. I go to Mama's. I go to John Rose Pork. I do not need to go to some crappy cheesesteak place that the Hockman family goes to and then just devour that thing. The only way I can eat it is put ketchup on it. I go to the elite places. That's the difference between me and you, Hawk. I mean, you go to gyms right there. On oh, overrated gyms. Yeah, yeah. Put <laughs> just, the ketchup all that over That is so it. overrated. You are oh, a, tor a tourist. Life. I expected better out of you. <laughs> yeah, I am a tourist, a tourist when I get there. I am a tourist when I get there. You, you put your hand really. right in the rat trap. That's what you did. And that wasn't a Panthers reference. How about the Florida Panthers, by the way? Very impressive, How about too. about the Florida Throw Panthers? Throw those rats all over the place. Now, wait a second. What is your tasty cake of choice? So I was just in the Tasty Cake Studios in Philadelphia at mm. WIP, and oh, I had no, the- I saw that on social media. I meant to show that to my wife. How cool yeah. is that? The studios at WIP are named for Tasty Cake. They bought yes. the naming rights. That's so that, cool. So that is huh. fat people heaven. So I enjoyed it. I took a bunch for the road. I was at a wedding. I saw my dad. I go, oh, here's like three or four just sleeves of Tasty Cakes. I did like the coffee cake, Tasty Cake. That was my my one of choice, but you can't go wrong. Whatever you, you sample there is fine. Butterscotch crimp it. Let's be very honest. good. First yeah. good food yeah. take that has happened yeah. on this show from Thank either you, you or Solana. Appreciate that. All right. Well, then I'll bring this in because I do I want to talk more about the heat, but I, I, I'll i bring this up because Solana is looking on longingly. Solana has been trolling Knicks fans with his tweets. And one of his tweets today, what was it yesterday? And I agreed with you because I said bright line is better than the New York City subway. Oh, <laughs> yesterday you said True. that uh, the New York bagel is overrated. I said Stupid. Uh, New Yorkers <laughs> have to come to terms with two facts, two truths. The Heat are better than the Knicks, number one. I don't think anybody would uh, would disagree with that. And number Agreed. two. Maybe Ben Stiller. <laughs> <laughs> Spike Lee. <laughs> number two. Publix bagels from the deli, plain, the bagged, plain bagels. the plain bagels bagged from the deli are better than those overrated New York City water bagels that everybody raves oh, about. You can't have a bagel in South Florida because it doesn't have the water from Far Rockaway. Ridiculous. ridiculous. Stale absolutely. takes Solana strikes again. If you tell me that you were going to Bagel Emporium in, in Miami, fine. But call. Publix? Publix call. to get a bagel? That, that's insulting. I'm insulted. You should be insulted, Solano. That was one of the dumbest takes I've ever heard. The Publix bagel. Give me a my, break. Uh, my old roommate, Barry, who was here at the studios today, used to work a one Sunday shift when we went to UM at Bagel Emporium. That is a great, really? Yeah, that's a great call. By, by you. the way, that take by Solano is as dumb as... As Mike Greenberg and Jalen Rose blaming the weather, <laughs> the weather, where the Knicks are getting their ass kicked. That's Too that's hot. the le on level of how dumb that take is. Didn't make a lot of sense that take, did it? That the no. weather is sapping you. When I said though to to Crowder at the beginning of the show today, you know, a lot of times we'll replay an interview in the five o'clock hour. I want to foster the take that the weather saps you. I want people, I want to make it sound like the four hours we're doing here every day. There's a reason we mail it in sometimes in the final hour of the show. We're gassed by the, by the hot weather. So I, I'm actually embracing Jalen Rose and Mike Greenberg's take.
Yeah, and let's just forget that they play indoors. This is not chanting when you're a football player and you're playing outside. There's AC in that arena. This is not the TD Garden back in the 70s or 80s before I was even a thought. They so, got to walk from the bus to the stadium, I guess. I don't know what these damn dudes are talking about. They're goofy. So Solana today, Crowder, tweets out, you know, Katz's Deli in New York, legendary, the pastrami sandwich. You can't even get your mouth around it, right? I mean, it is just a ridiculous sandwich. Solana today on Twitter puts out that the chicken tender sub at Publix is better than a pastrami sandwich at Katz's. And I believe that set you off, Zach? Yeah, so basically what Solana is saying is like um, R.J. Barrett is better than Jimmy Butler with with a take like that. How that's what that's you. how you make the equivalence, which how we all know that you. isn't true. You, your Jimmy sandwich Butler's that you Publix, posted, right, Solana, Jimmy Butler's Publix. No, come on. We, we, <laughs> we, we've seen the photo that Solana ha- has posted. That looked like a Subway sandwich. It was a glorified at best Subway sandwich. What's no boy, no. What's wrong with no, a Subway boy, sandwich? No. I happen to Please. think a turkey and cheese from Subway is better than Katz's Deli as well if you want to go there, Gelb. <laughs> this is why sometimes program directors say the producer shouldn't talk on the air. Moments <laughs> like this. Well, here's That's what why, you're learning. And I'm going to show you exactly why the producer should talk on the air. Because minutes ago, Zach Gelb, you were just claiming that Jim Steaks is an overrated tourist trap. But it now is. you're... Co- now... You're Katz's Deli is not an overrated Deli tourist is trap. Not an overrated tourist trap. No, it is the epitome of the overrated tourist trap. I've eaten there several times. The only reason why people line up outside is because there's pictures of De Niro and Stiller and other I need loser the proof. Nick fans inside. I need the proof that you have that you have ate at, at Katz's Deli. Sandwiches. I need the proof because right now several we live times. in a world where people could just claim things, and I'm going to claim <laughs> something back. Fake news, you're full of crap. You've never had any Katz's Deli. I, not a shot. Not a shot. I, I want to see a known. photo, not Photoshop, of you at Katz's Deli. You know what? Come to New York. I'll take you to Katz's Deli. And I want to see you tell me to my face after you eat the whole sandwich like a pig that it isn't good. <laughs> How about this? I'll, g- I'll give you one better. I think Cheesecake Factory... Their cheesecake is better than Junior's cheesecake in New York. I, I'm I'm not in love with Junior's cheesecake, so oh, that that's not going to make the blood overrated. boil here. All right, little overrated. Uh, a Wawa, a Wawa sub is much better than Katz's <laughs> Deli pastrami sandwich. I love Wawa. I, I created the the chicken finger at five special at five a.m. down at the Jersey Shore when I just walked into the Wawa and I said. Five dollars, five chicken fingers. And a lady looked at me and she just knew I was a little bit too intoxicated. But, <laughs> you know, I tried to get a deal there. The, the w- Wawa is delicious, but you can't compare it to Katz's Deli. All right. Have you ever really been to Katz's, Solana? Because you've been known to lie on this show. Oh, I lie all the time, Gelb. There's no doubt about it. But my sister lived in Manhattan, still lives in New York. She's lived in Manhattan since 2008. I go to New York three, four times a year. Never I've seen you. Katz- I've been to Katz's <laughs> Deli. Social media. Do we even know if this sister is real or is this like Manti Teo's girlfriend, non-existent? <laughs> he doesn't have a sister. You, you figured it out. Never I seen mean, a photo. I mean, apparently, <laughs> apparently, you, you 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 come down to Miami all the time. I mean, you yeah. know about bagel shops down here. <laughs> Guess what? I'm the mayor of Miami, brother. I haven't seen you down here either. <laughs> the mayor, the mayor of Miami. Please, uh, I go to Joe's Stone Crab when I'm in town. I go to Carbone Prime One Twelve. Uh, uh, come on, she Channing Crowder's even agreeing. Yeah. He knows I go to the good places. And also, Carbone. look at me. I, even after losing seventy pounds, <laughs> I'm still a large man. You're a twig. Why should I trust you <laughs> to, to give me a good food opinion? It'd be like if I went up to I don't know a baseball player and said, "Hey, go teach Channing Crowder how to tackle." It's stupid what you're doing right now. You don't even know how to eat. You're an animal. You're a savage, so uh, Manhattan, Chicago pizza, and Kendall. <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. All right. I got to move on. Hey, Gil. Zach Gecko, Gil. Check out Gecko. This is a new one. You can, okay. uh, you can listen to Zach Gelb on the CBS Sports Radio Network every night. Real quick, what's the, what's the narrative? I asked you the narrative nationally on Jimmy Butler. What's the narrative nationally on Bam Adebayo? It's weird because I think Bam is better than what people give him credit for. But I think Bam at times this postseason 
hasn't been playing the level that he's capable of. And we did see it last night at the level that he could play. I think Bam is probably more so a three on a championship team, but there are some exceptions when you have a team like Miami with that championship heat culture that Solana uh, tweets about all the time. It's actually like the only thing that's true in anything that he puts out there on social media where a team like Miami with the right star can, can go out there and get to a finals with Bam out of bio as your second best player. Quickly on the way out, Zach, what's the West looking like, man? I, I thought it'd be way different. I thought I thought the Nuggets going to run away with it. They're tied up in the damn series. Yeah, I was disappointed in games three and four. I thought for sure Denver would find a way to pull out one of them. I didn't think they were going to sweep. I'm still going to trust Denver the most because – I don't think people nationally and even, you know, locally realize how important Jamal Murray is because Jamal Murray in, in 2021, they were on their way to go into a championship and beat a championship team before he tore his ACL up against the Golden State Warriors. I will trust that we will find a way to see the Nuggets prevail in the Western Conference. But here comes LeBron and Anthony Davis, and they've been special too. And the Suns, I feel like they'll eventually cool off. It's, uh, Devin Booker's great. He's shooting 61% from the field. That's just unheard of. Eventually, the law of averages have to even out, and you have to have a bad game. How great would it be if you saw a couple of play-in teams, the Heat and the Lakers, go to their respective conference finals? It would be great for you guys, and, and that's going to happen. But it drives me nuts because as much as I can't stand Solana, I just I hate even more Spineless Silver and Adam Silver. He drives me crazy. And I hate that the play-in tournament has worked for him because he's got the stars. If the stars weren't in the play-in tournament, a.k.a. they didn't dog the regular season, then I think this play-in tournament would be irrelevant. But it's worked out for him because he's got the stars in it. Solana, are you feeling the heat from Zach Gelb here a little bit? He's gone after you. Now, Zach's a big dude, right? Mm -hmm. Aren't you like 7'5"? Uh, uh, <laughs> not, not quite. 6'4", um, uh, <laughs> but I am a large man. And Shannon Crowder, actually, when I first met him years ago, when he was working with Sid Rosenberg, uh, he once tried to steal a Sharpie from me, and then when I called him out on it, he goes, I've been to jail for things before, never stealing a Sharpie, so he gave me the Sharpie back. And there's probably some other stories on that trip where wow. other people not named Channing Crowder could have been arrested for maybe some violence with the producer that I'll leave for uh, Mark Hockman's special yeah. Twitter page to get the details out we on that. We all have the picture of a bloody Sid Rosenberg <laughs> in the cab. We all have that picture in our favorite. I've told, I've told the story, Zach. That is the okay. best story ever. The cat is out of the bag. I was I in high believe. school at that time, and I I'll can't. never forget that. I can't believe Zach Gelb stopped you from taking his Sharpie. There are very few people on the planet that would stop Channing Crowder from taking their Sharpie. I'm guessing, were you producing for someone or something and you were afraid like that, that was your territory? Uh, no, I was actually, I was hosting a, a high school or it was a college radio show and, and we got to the, to the Super Bowl at Radio Row, but I just needed the Sharpie back. It, it, it was an expensive Sharpie at the time. And also Channing Crowder, to wrap this up, when he gave me back the Sharpie, he signed me a nice photo, and he wrote Katz's Deli's better. That's what he wrote on, on the photo. I have it. Like, Solana could cr uh, claim BS, so can I. But I will tell you, somebody texted in, pretty brilliant point, which is Solana keeps talking about how overrated Katz's Deli is, but then he keeps saying he's been there every time he goes to New yeah. York three times a year. Which one is it, Solana? Why do you keep going to the most overrated deli in the country? I mean, hey, you're in New York. You got to go to Katz's Deli. <laughs> because he just Miami. got – that's what happened. You lose. It's over. One, <laughs> two, three. Crown me as the champion, Solana. <laughs> Zach Gelb, CBS Sports Radio Network. Thank what, you, Zach. What, one more quick, it. one more quick, uh, one more quick ask of Zach. Take it easy on our guy Tua, will you? I mean, I, I turn on. What do you mean? I love Tua Tonga Vailoa. Oh, he just Solana. can't stay healthy, you unfortunately. Before Zach comes on, please break by forty-six. You're gonna bring up Tua at forty-six. <laughs> like we can have him on as often as you want. You literally said to me, "Please break by 46. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to bring up Tua now. I I I was gonna get that off at some point before breaking. <laughs> really, I didn't notice. I was, was gonna to, get that off. He was trying to win an argument because he got his ass whooped this whole segment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he was relentless there, man. I feel. I, I also hear WQAM's looking to bring Vic uh, Bermudez back to replace Salon <laughs> after the segment. I mean, oh. Vic is gonna have that audio on Instagram for the next three years <laughs> <laughs> with the Hialeah flag. All right, there you go, Zach Gelb from CBS Thanks, Sports guys. Radio. Thank you, Zach. There you go, Zach Gelb from CBS Sports Radio. That was funny, man.